Hi, this is Beth, and this is just a few words I would like to tell you before we get into the What I Eat in a Day video that I shot about a week ago. And I won't get all chatty on you because this video is super chatty. And if you'd like to bypass the chat in just a few moments, I'll put the counter on there so you can see what point you need to go to to zip ahead to actually what I eat in a day because I've had challenges with food all my life, challenges with staying slender, and I do explain that at the first of the video and it takes a while. I will say that in general, I follow a low carb lifestyle. However, in the video at the end, I mentioned I'm following keto because I would like to follow keto and I think I'm going to move more in that direction. But as you will see by the food that I prepare, it is really not strictly keto, but I did want to let you know that, that I am aware of the differences, but I have decided after reading more about keto, especially because I do have some shoulder pain going on, some inflammation in my shoulder, I think keto will be my ticket going forward, at least for a while. I'm going to experiment with that. And if you'd like to see a video about the results I have when I truly do go full keto, let me know in the comment section and I will share that information with you in the future too. Okay, I hope you enjoy my video of what I eat in a day. Hi, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm really excited to have you here with me today because I'm going to be showing you what I eat in a day. And you all have been requesting this video off and on for the last couple of years and I've never gotten around to it because I have a very odd kind of eating habit. I guess it's not that odd, but I was a little bit worried that some of you would see it and give me terrible comments about how it wasn't nutritious or whatever. But I have to say, I'm over 60 years old. I'm 62, I had to think for a minute there. I always wanna make myself 63. But anyway, I have wrestled with developing a great eating plan pretty much my entire life. And I'm going to be showing you honestly what I eat in a day. And this is a very typical day for me because I really don't have to eat a bunch of different variety of things. I develop a breakfast that I like and I eat that and a lunch that I like. Now dinner, I do switch up, but the dinner I'm showing you tonight is absolutely my favorite dinner. And I was leery to tell you about this because some of you will start in the comment section crucifying me and, and I hope you won't do that. I hope you'll let you do you and me do me because believe me, I have studied diet for years. I was a vegetarian slash vegan for about five years up to about three years ago. I really did have an objection to how animals, I call them animals, how they're treated in terms of being slaughtered and all of that. I had kind of an emotional, very negative response to killing animals. I'd really prefer not to do that. And so I was a vegetarian for five years. I started being a vegetarian slash vegan because I saw the video Forks Over Knives and quite a few other videos that espouse the idea that it is totally much more healthy to be plant-based. And I was plant-based for those four or five years, vegan, vegetarian, which is very high carbohydrate. And during that time, I still had rheumatoid arthritis and I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, a form called ankylosing spondylitis, which is a spinal arthritis, which ends up supposedly at the end of your life, you know, making you look at the ground like a C. And so in my thirties, when I got diagnosed with that and started going to the rheumatologist, I was fairly terrified. I didn't want to end up with posture like this, looking at the ground all the time. I'd seen people with ankylosing spondylitis and it was not a good look. So anyway, I did all the traditional pharmaceuticals with that rheumatologist for five to eight, nine years, realized that pretty much for me, it was just a matter of going from painkiller to painkiller. Each time I went, I would get a more advanced painkiller with a lot more side effects and it really wasn't doing anything for the underlying problem. It was just making me more comfortable. So then I started looking into a full range of alternative therapies to cure my rheumatoid arthritis. And there is a video that I'll put a link to below this video. And it tells you all of the alternative therapies I tried to combat my RA and I tried a ton of them. So fast forward to just a few years ago, again, I was a vegetarian vegan for five years, which was very high carbohydrate, a lot of beans, a lot of rice, a lot of tortillas, that kind of thing. And so I still had about 10 or 20% of my body pain on that diet. And I kept looking for ways to get rid of that pain. And I found the paleo autoimmune, which is basically very low carb, heavy meat, vegetables with a little bit of fruit. And so I switched to their autoimmune protocol, which also adds in don't eat eggs, don't eat cheese, which I don't like eggs anyway. And I'm sensitive to cheese. It gives me digestive issues. So I don't eat that. So it's pretty easy for me. And although in the first week of switching from plant-based to all that meat, 
It grossed me out and it was hard to eat meat, especially for the first week or so. Within two or three weeks, I said, ooh, I like these steaks. I like these bacon burgers. And I was off to the races. And within the first two weeks, all of my joint pain was gone and I felt much, much better. And I will say that somehow I injured my shoulder maybe about a year ago. And so I do have a shoulder issue, but that is not related to the RA. When I stay low carb, I really do much better in terms of pain control. I just basically don't have any symptoms at all of the RA, which I'm thrilled about. So that brings us to today and doing my what I eat in a day video for you. And to do that, since I've never done a what I eat in a day video, I looked at the videos of some other YouTubers and one of them I found was Jennifer Jenkins. I love her. She's absolutely a beautiful young 40 something. I think she said she was 46 in her latest video, but she showed what she eats in a day and I'll link that video below. And if you haven't seen her channel, you ought to go check it out because she is wonderful. I love her. But anyway, in looking at her video, I realized that I am markedly different from the Jennifer Jenkins of the world. And I've done a lot of study about eating disorders and eating addiction, food addiction. Although I do not like to label myself because words have power, I really have a food addiction, sugar addiction, carb addiction problem. And when I start eating sugar and carbs and that kind of thing, I am off to the races and I can't quit eating. For me, there is no eating one piece of pie because I really want to eat two or three. And then I want to eat not just the Cool Whip that's on the top, I want to take the Cool Whip and eat the whole thing. You guys, I mean, I, I know some of you feel my pain and I'm convinced that it really is a biochemical type issue. But anyway, getting back to the Jennifer Jenkins video, I was totally struck by how on a scale of one to 10 with food addiction being here and non-food addiction being here, I'd say she was a one or a two. She said things in that video, which I would love. I would purchase this if I could, but she said things in that video like, well, sometimes I miss lunch because I just kind of forget to eat, which, which I've never forgotten to eat in my entire life. Pretty much, I'm always thinking about, you know, what I'm eating now and maybe thinking about lunch and dinner and what I'm going to eat then. It's kind of always on my mind. Another thing she said is she showed her dinner in which she did have a very modest looking potato with some chicken on it, I think, and some cheese and some things like that. It looked pretty darn small to me. And she said, oh, well, now you think that looks small, but when I get to the end of that, I'm so stuffed, I can't hardly take another bite. And she said, sometimes I'll make another half of that potato concoction and I'll put it on the plate and I'll get to it and I can't even eat it and I just throw it away because I'm so full from that one little potato. And I just thought to myself, if I had made myself a serving and a half of something and put it on one plate, I am eating that whole thing. So anyway, suffice it to say that I am not a normal eater when it comes to food. And I will put another link to a video called The Hunger Monster below, which, which talks a little bit more about that. And I think many of you can kind of identify with my feelings with regard to food. Some of you can't at all. And you'll just say, well, why not just have one cookie? And then the other people will kind of understand me and go, I can't have one cookie because then I will want the whole bag. And one more thing before I get into telling you about my eating style, and I'm sorry this has been so long-winded, but one more thing is that recently I posted a video on my first eight weeks progress on weightlifting. And look at these guns, babies. I've got some good looking guns. <laughs> but anyway, and now I'm 22 weeks in and you all have been asking me to do my glute workout and to show you my entire workout. And I'll put a link to that video below and I'll show you a picture of what was the most astonishing result that I had in the first eight weeks. And one of my viewers thought I Photoshopped this. And it's so funny that she accused me of Photoshopping because I actually did Photoshop it over that little tiny string bikini almost. I added a black triangle so that it wouldn't look so indecent. But I really did want to show you a little bit more of that before butt picture so you could really see the impact that eight weeks of weight training can have on the glutes. And I will post that video soon. Okay, getting into what I eat in a day, the whole idea behind this video. I am very low carb because when I start eating cakes, pies, cookies, rice, beans, that kind of thing, I'm hungry all the time. And when I stick to my low carb, I actually get sane around food because if I'm eating carbs and sugar and that kind of thing, I'm kind of insane when it comes to food and I'm always thinking about it. But when I stay low carb, I think my blood sugar stays very nice and even and I don't crave food. I don't really think about food. My food choices are made ahead of time for me. I kind of figure it out the day before 
and food does not really become an issue for me. So I really do my best to stay as low carb as I can. However, every now and then on the weekend, we'll go to a Mexican restaurant and I will, you know, have a normal Mexican meal with the tortillas and all that, which I normally wouldn't on my low carb. So anyway, okay, this is what I eat in a day. Well, I start the day with coffee and, oh, that is really gross, sorry. I get my lipstick everywhere. I start the day with coffee and this is actually not coffee. This is green tea because what I do is before I start work, which I'm working out of my home, before eight o'clock in the morning, I have as much coffee as I want. And in my first cup of coffee, I put collagen. And this is what I used to use until very recently. And as you can see, this one's almost gone. My husband is using this one in his smoothies. This was the Vital Proteins Collagen. But then I saw another great YouTuber, which is, what's her name? Fabulous 50s. And I can't remember her name, but I love her. She's fabulous. And she did a video on hair. And I'm always looking for ways to make my hair more there, because <laughs> sometimes my hair is very thin. And she totally recommended this brand of collagen called Grass-Fed Perfect Hydrolyzed Collagen. And I started this, this is my first jar of this, and I will say it's pricey, it's $39. So this better be growing some hair on my head or I'm going to switch back to the vital proteins. But I just do one scoop of this and a cup of coffee and you can't taste it at all. It's absolutely wonderful there. You have to stir it up because once in a while you get a little white chunk, but you stir it all up. And so I drink coffee as long as I want to in the morning. And then maybe around 10 o'clock or so, I do switch to green tea. I love jasmine green tea, and I'll put a link to that below because there's a really good one that you can get at Walmart. Green tea is known to be a fat burner. It's known to even out your insulin. I just really like it, and I think it's really healthy to drink green tea. Now we get to breakfast, and I try as much as I can to eat as late in the morning as possible. Then about 10 or 10.30, I eat my first meal of the day, which is my breakfast, and here it is. I eat four slices of bacon, and I get this from Costco, and it's pre-cooked bacon. And I know some of you are saying, oh my God, how unhealthy is that? But I'm going to put a link below to Dr. Ken, who does a lot of keto videos, to a wonderful video he did about the nitrate scandal with regard to bacon and processed meats. He says the science is just not there to support that this is bad for you, that we have been eating processed meats pretty much since time began, and we really don't have health problems from it. But I do four pieces of bacon, and I think that is 60 calories. I think each piece of bacon is 50 calories. So that's a 200 calorie breakfast, which is not too bad. So let me show you how I do that. Okay, here are my four pieces of bacon right here. And then I have this wonderful little bacon cooker. And my husband got this for me. Here it is. It's got, you kind of put the bacon in here and then the grease drops down there. And I really don't mind about high fat either. I really monitor my cholesterol well. And in fact, my husband and I, Alan, we just had a lifeline screening where they looked at our carotids because I did want to make sure, since I am high fat, that my carotids are looking good. And I'll know the answer to that in about three weeks. It was interesting to go do, do that during the COVID situation. But anyway, there are the four pieces of bacon and I put them in the microwave on a minute 10. And this is how the bacon looks when it first comes out of the microwave. Beautiful little slices of bacon there. But I like to give it a minute or two to kind of cool down and get hard because I like my bacon to be really crunchy. So in the meantime, let me show you the beverages that I drink through the day and then I'll come back and show you the bacon. Okay, here's a look at my kitchen. It's been redecorated from the old world, painted the cabinets white. Okay, this is my coffee bar. A lot of people would just let this be a bar bar. There it is. Neither my husband or I drink. I haven't had a drink in 20 years which I'm happy about. And in addition to just the general good benefits of not drinking, and there are too many of them to name, my life is much better since I quit drinking. But in addition to that, I think it has beauty benefits because I used to at least have a couple of glasses of wine every night and often my cheeks would get flushed. And I just think putting poison into yourself, which alcohol really is a poison, is really not good for your looks either. So I'm happy that I quit drinking for that reason. This is where I make my coffee in the morning and this is the best coffee maker known to man and I'll put a link below the video for that. It basically never burns your coffee because it doesn't sit on a hot eye. You just kind of use this little button to get the coffee out of the carafe and so it stays non-burnt, which is wonderful. There's my Keurig and I allow myself a Keurig cup or two a day of coffee there. And then I have an iced tea machine and I've added this recently and I absolutely love it because I do drink a ton of iced tea. In fact, there is my McDonald's cup. 
My husband and I always, for treats, will go out and get an unsweetened iced tea at McDonald's. And I keep the cup so at home I can just put in my normal iced tea and I feel like I've got a treat. And there is my crystal light. And you guys are all going to complain because it does have artificial sweeteners. But I really think that you can't have a perfect diet. And that does give me a little treat when I get hungry in the afternoon. I try not to snack. So the crystal light does help with that. And about a year and a half ago, I quit Diet Dr. Peppers entirely because I was getting addicted to Diet Dr. Peppers. I would have not one Diet Dr. Pepper a day, but probably five, six, seven. It was pretty much the only thing I was drinking. And I was really proud of myself that a year ago, one of my New Year's resolutions was quitting Diet Dr. Pepper, and I did. So every now and then, I do let myself have Crystal Light, and that doesn't really bother me. Okay, the bacon is now done, and here it is. It looks so yummy. And basically, I take the pieces and I put them on a plate with a napkin. I'll show you that in a minute. I know I know you know how to do this, but oh well. I just put it on my little plate and then I kind of pat it to get the extra grease off of it. And it's all nice and crunchy. I do not like limp bacon. And as you can see, it stands on its own. It is very crunchy and not limp at all. So now I'm going to go ahead and eat my little bacon breakfast and then I'll come back and show you my lunch. Okay, now it's time to make lunch. It's around 12.15 here. And normally I eat lunch a little earlier than that, maybe around 11.45 or 12, so I'm a little bit hungry. But what I do is I make the same salad pretty much every day. I absolutely love this salad. Again, I don't have to have much variety. I just like this salad. Because I'm manning my own camera, I'll go ahead and show you the ingredients of the salad, and then I'll show you how I put them all together. But it starts with this organic spring mix that I get from Costco, love this. It is a whole mess of lettuce, and I'm pretty much the only one who eats this type of spring mix lettuce in my house because my husband grew up on iceberg lettuce, and so I always have to buy iceberg for him, but I really prefer this. So it starts with that. And next, I add some turkey breast, and again, I get this from Costco. I absolutely love this. It's called their Naturals brand, and it's supposedly natural. Who knows? It says there are no artificial ingredients, whatever that means. And it has three of these little packets in it of turkey. And I get turkey or chicken usually. Once in a while I get ham. I don't really have a preference on that, but right now I'm doing turkey. Then I add carrots to the mix and I really do like these. And I'll show you how I chop them up in just a few minutes because I have a really good tool that does that. Then I add either a half or a whole avocado. And this one has a little score line in it because I tried to cut it yesterday and it was too hard. So I let it sit out on the counter and I hope it doesn't look brown on the inside. Avocados, as you know, you know, sometimes they're too ripe, sometimes not ripe enough, but this one feels squishy now, so I think it will be very good on my salad. Absolutely love avocados, and it's a lot of good healthy fat, and I know it seems crazy, but a lot of the time I'll eat a full avocado on my salad. Really love them, and the calories don't seem to affect me much. Okay, here's a look at the ingredients to my salad, and I begin by washing my hands very well. Now I take this spring mix, which is right here, and I just grab a bunch of that. Just stick it on that little plate. I used to eat my salads on a large dinner plate and I realized that I was wasting a lot of food because I did quit eating and also I just thought it encouraged me to eat more because this is plenty of salad on this plate. I am absolutely stuffed by the time I eat this salad actually. Okay, just kind of rip that up a little bit. Then I go in with some turkey meat and I don't ever measure this. I just kind of grab a hunk and just kind of put it on there until it looks like it's kind of covering my salad. Here we go. Try to kind of divide it up a little bit. It tends to clump up on me. This looks so good. I'm actually excited for lunch because I'm a little bit hungry now. Maybe a little more turkey meat than that even. There we go. Wipe off my hands. They get a little bit greasy there. Then I'll do my carrots and I will get my tool for you. And this is called the Clever Cutter. Okay, I just realized my video wasn't on, so I hope you saw me add the first avocado. If it wasn't on, I'll go ahead and show you how I do it on the second half. I just score it like this, just right along there, long cuts. And then I make little squares, little cubes of avocado. It's kind of messy. And then you just take your spoon and just put that avocado in your salad. There we go. Get every cube out of there. I just think avocados taste so good. Okay, there is the complete salad, which I think just looks yummy. Look at that, turkey, spring mix, carrots and avocados, very easy. 
<laughs> then I used my favorite dressing, and this is the Paul Newman's dressing, the Newman's own light balsamic dressing. Hi, come on in. I'm doing a little video real quick. So anyway, I just put that salad dressing on there. I'm kind of generous with that, but that is a really tasty salad. Now, the person who came in during the video, she came in the front door, is Melanie, my son Dylan's fiance. They are living with us for three more weeks. They've already been with us a week because she closed on her house, he closed on his house, and they're not buying their new house for another three weeks, so they're living with us, which is great. She came home to grab something for lunch. But anyway, there is my salad. I'll eat that, and then I'll meet you back here for dinner. Okay, now it's time for dinner, and I'm really excited to show you my dinner, but I have to say I didn't tell you something that I should have told you this morning, and that is that I switched from vegetarian to paleo autoimmune three years ago, and since that time, I have gone more to keto, which is higher fat than paleo, none of the fruit really, or very little of the fruit that is on the paleo diet. Keto is really high fat, high protein and low carbohydrate. I guess they say it isn't high protein, but I do eat a lot of protein on this diet or eating plan, I guess, and I really do like meat. I found that out. And uh, so a steak is wonderful to me. Meatloaf, I have to do it gluten-free because I am gluten-free. Meatloaf, pork chops, something like that. I really do like those. And lately I've been going through a phase where I'm really liking Italian sausage. And here they are. And I actually made them last night. And I do that. Really, since the kids grew up and Alan and I were kind of on our own, what we tend to do is we'll make food for one night and make enough leftovers for at least the next night, if not two nights after that. Because really, I don't love to cook. I cooked when the kids were young and then they left. I still have a busy lifestyle and I'm pretty simple in terms of my food. I like one ingredient foods a lot of the time. So for dinner, we'll have a meat, like pork chops or hamburger or Italian sausage, something like that, a salad. Alan will have some bread. I don't have the bread because that is carb. Plus I'm gluten-free because I have digestive issues if I eat gluten. So I don't have the bread, but really my meals are extremely simple in the evening. And actually with this meal, I'm really kind of liking it the best right now. And these are Italian sausage. And there they are from last night. They're cold. I kept them in the refrigerator today, put them in a little Tupperware. And I eat two of them, and so I'll take them out here. And how I make them is I just bake them in the oven. I think it was on like 375 for maybe 30 minutes. I like them really kind of dark, almost black. I really like that taste. I take the Italian sausage, and I am absolutely loving the spaghetti sauce right now. And I get this at Walmart, and this is the Barilla Roasted Garlic. And I really absolutely love this one. It is so tasty, I crave it. And I've noticed that when I go to Walmart to get it, sometimes it's out of stock. So other people must like it too. So I'll buy three or four of these ahead. I use these on a lot of other things other than just Italian sausage. I'll put this on pork chops or chicken breast, something like that, and it really just adds a lot of moisture and adds a lot of taste, and I love the taste of garlic, so this is really good. I just put it over the Italian sausage, and I'm pretty generous. I give myself quite a bit of that. I used to put this in the microwave for a couple of minutes and then sprinkle a lot of Parmesan cheese on it, but cheese and dairy is something that I try to avoid as well because as long as I stay away from gluten and dairy products, I really don't have digestive issues, which is wonderful. Okay, let me go put this in the microwave and I'll be right back. And while I'm waiting on the sausage to cook, I wanted to talk with you a little bit about the keto diet because I'm sure a lot of you are seeing the amount of bacon that I eat and the amount of sausages that I eat and looking at all that fat and it's kind of freaking you out a little bit. Well, I would urge you, and I'll put a link below, to visit Dr. Ken Berry's channel. He is an MD, he's a family practice doctor who used to be morbidly obese and discovered the keto lifestyle way of eating, started eating keto, did tons of research on it. He and Dr. Boz, and I'll put a link to her channel below too. And when you watch them, they are so methodical about the science behind the keto diet and the benefits that you accrue with the keto diet that it is very convincing and the high fat nature really isn't an issue when you look at the research on that. So anyway, that's all I'll say about that. And I will tell you that ever since I started eating like this, I no longer crave food. I don't think about food the way I used to. I can almost miss a meal because I just kind of don't think about food all the time anymore. 
And really, I'm not voraciously hungry at meals either, because when you eat a lot of fat, it fills you up, you're satiated. The science behind the keto diet is really very good, and I'm not a doctor, so I won't start talking about studies. I'll let you visit those channels if you would like, because it is very compelling. I do think there is a beauty aspect to the keto diet. Eating low carbohydrate reduces the inflammation in your body, and that helps your skin look better. Okay, the sausage are done, and I'll show you that in a more close-up way in just a few moments. And this is the salad that I'm having tonight, and here it is. And this is actually one of those salad kits, and I really find them to be extremely easy to do, and they have wonderful ingredients in them. This one has kale and parsley and cauliflower, and it has sesame seeds and sunflower seeds, and it has a really nice chili vinaigrette dressing, which adds a little bit of a kick to it. Absolutely love this one, but I try a variety of them because they're generally all pretty good and they're super easy to do. And I will say that in terms of Alan and I, we usually have a meat every night, sometimes a potato. He'll have a white potato, I have a sweet potato because that's lower carb, and a salad, and he'll have bread, and that's pretty much our meal. Let me show you how this looks close up. Okay, here is those Italian sausages, and they are super, super good. Just cut those up and eat them. And then here's a little salad. I'll go ahead and put some of that on the plate. And so that is my keto dinner that I'll be enjoying this evening. Now, in terms of snacks, I do my best not to snack during the day. But if I get hungry, I might have, you know, a little bit of celery with some peanut butter on it, something like that. Nut butters are good. And I do have an indulgence that I'm loving lately. And these are from Walmart. And these are the Breyers Carb Smart Bars. And they have only 60 calories a piece. This is the caramel swirl bar version. And they also have a traditional chocolate bar that has ice cream in the middle with chocolate around the outside. And those are really good. But they're 120 calories. So I really like it that this one is only 60 calories. And it is very low carb. It has four net carbs, and that's the lowest carbohydrate dessert bar I have found. And so I will be eating one of these tonight after dinner. Well, that was a look at what I eat in a day. And again, I hope you'll be kind to me in the comments because everybody has their own style of eating. And for me, the keto lifestyle is working out the absolute best because I really don't have food addiction issues when I stay very close to eating correctly on that diet. Well, that was a look at what I eat in a day. And if you're interested in all things beauty, diet, lifestyle, fitness related for those of us over 50, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel, click the little bell and share this with a friend if you would. Okay, at this point in my video, I normally leave you with a thought for the day, but I'm in my kitchen and I don't have my cards with me. I guess I'll tell you a little bit about what I'm doing this evening, which I'm really excited about this. Every Tuesday night, we have a dinner at our house, a family dinner. I have two sons, but only one of them lives here in Wichita. The other one lives in Grand Rapids. And what we do every Tuesday night is I have my son Dylan over with his fiance, Melanie. And every other week, we have one or the other sets of grandparents. And tonight, my parents will be coming to eat dinner with Dylan and Melanie and Alan and I. And next week, Alan's parents will be coming over. And in that way, we kind of keep the family together. And I will say that during this challenging COVID time, we still socially distance when they come over because all of the parents are over 80. So it's really important to protect them. Well, that was a little look into my family life. I absolutely love my family. And of course we all do. And if you'd like to share the ways in which you are still managing to interact with your family during this situation, and if you would share that information down in the comments, I would like to learn more about you and your family. Okay, I guess that's it for this video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one.